10 tries and pretty much the perfect 10 in terms of performance. Three out of three in this autumn series. Yeah, brilliant second half from Wales. I, what impressed me was how clinical they were. So often in the past, as we mentioned at the top of the show, struggle when all these changes are made. But under pressure as well, you were thinking with the interception 24 hole, you were thinking, here we go again. But in fairness and composure, they showed and you know, the, the accuracy and attack was superb, so brilliant performance. Wales number three in the world, and we can see why. When a second stream comes out, so say second stream, well it is, uh, and performs and scores ten tries. And I think in, in the years gone by, we've seen that the Wales play this game against these types of tier two, and their heads go down, the confidence goes down, but this time, this is how professional the unit is. I think Warren's got really in the right frame of mind to put in those great performances. And you said ahead of this, sometimes the problems with these tier two matches is players are trying to prove themselves, trying to, to get themselves into that first team. Play as a team, you said, and the results will come. And Dan Bigger orchestrated that brilliantly. Yeah, he was, he was the glue with that experience himself and Liam Williams as well, you know, in tough times, I think they were the guys who guided Wales through in those tough moments about Dan Bigger ahead of the match, having to orchestrate the game, make very mature decisions, make sure that this, this team played as a team, not a group of individuals trying to get into the first team. And, you know, he is, it's amazing to think that Dan Bigger is kind of in that position. He was so, so long number one. Yeah, I think Dan Bigger is a very consistent high performer. He very rarely makes mistakes. He's very consistent. His goal kicking is as good as Lee Harpenny's, if not slightly better on occasions. That's a basic manoeuvre for a number, t number 10, pass and support. Great, great tip there for any youngster watching, as a, as a fly half particularly. Um, the beauty with his maturity is he can see the game really well. That's a Beautiful nice little space that he, uh, he spotted. I mean, he's, his mind is quicker than his body these days. He's a, he's a footballer, he can read the game, but his body can't take him where he might want to be. And in terms of strength and depth in the number 10 position, Reese Patchell comes on, also gets himself over the line and proves that, you know, there is this great succession plan there. Absolutely, and Gareth Anscombe has done nothing wrong in the first two weeks as well. I think that's what the beauty of today's performance is, Reese Patchell. This, look, Reese Patchell could play 15, very, you know, very, very easily. He's got great, he's a big man, he's got great pace. As he shows you, look, he's a tired Tonga defence who's just been absolutely battered up to this point. But that's what you want. You want guys coming off the bench and making an impact. The bench was really impressive today. And he's just another guy who adds to the selection issue, which in the past, after these games, on a Monday morning, selection has been easy for Warren Gatland. Patchell was a player who was going to take over from bigger, but now Ainscombe's come into the picture. I think Patchell and Ainscombe offer a different game style to Dan. Dan's going to be the backstop, I think, from now on, unless these two guys play so poorly that he goes back to his DNA of Dan. Ten tries, it's hard to pick a winner, but Eddie Butler's a potential try of the autumn series. Alan Davis, would you go with that? I would go with that, and I think it was 22 offloads from Wales today. You know, before we've seen them, they're very structured. They've been one up, they've been afraid to offload, and it's not just 50 50 offloads. It's th this man, you know, Liam Williams, uh, Jerry picked him up at the top of the show. He's actually on the floor there. He gets back on his feet. But these, it's these little offloads and the support runners. Liam Williams just been on the floor. He's back and it's great support for scrum halves. We've got a dearth of scrum halves as well. Alan Davis is a quality player. He comes on. Thomas Williams had a big game. Gareth Davis is waiting in the wings as well. So that was an outstanding try. It's not very often you see performances from what they say is your second stream. And these guys have really must have come together all week and say, look, it's taken so long for us to ever put in a performance like this. It's about time we did, and they have delivered brilliantly. Who's caused the biggest headache, do you think, for Warren Gatlin for next week? I think the outside half one is a big decision. I think, you know, it's difficult. Gareth Anscombe has just played 10 when they beat Australia, and Australia are obviously a much better team than Tonga. So I think they will stick with Gareth Anscombe. But, you know, in the back row, we're good. Seb Davis and Aaron Wainwright, but, you know, they're not going to change Tipperick or um, Tipperick Lydiot and probably Rob Moriarty, they're going to stay as a back row. So I would, as well as they played, I'd be surprised if many of these actually get. Liam Williams, I think, is the big one. It's a big decision to make between maybe Josh Adams and Liam Williams. I, I, I think the whole team played particularly well. I don't, think, I don't think Williams said enough to kind of go, yeah, I am so, but so in such great form. Dan Bigger played brilliantly, but I think they'll stick with Anscombe just because there's a different dynamic with the, with the, with the team. When, you're, when, you're with ter when you've got territory, Anscombe's more of a threat with the ball. Leon, yeah. And so he has sucked the defence, keep the defence narrow, which should give the space for their exciting back three.